Morning folks, Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. What I wanted to do this morning was I wanted to discuss bush pots with you for a minute. Billy cans as they're sometimes called. And go over an older model bush pot with you and show you a brand new design bush pot that's out there that we'll be carrying on our website come about Friday morning. I wanted to discuss the pros and cons with you a little bit of bush pots and what you can do with them and how useful they can be. And I also want to go over this new model of bush pot with you and show you some of the features of that pot. Stay with me. Okay, folks. Well, let me start off by saying that I'll be the first one to tell you that there's probably nothing brand new in the world of bushcraft or survival, for that matter. Most of the stuff is just an improvement on an older invention or a reinvention of something from past days. So it's very hard to come up with something or a new idea that hasn't already been out there. And there's nothing wrong with that because there's a lot of things that used to be made that aren't made anymore. And this is a good example of that. This pot here is a coffee pot from a cook set that was probably made in the 1950s. It basically contains my, my kit my fire starting kit and a few extra camp implements. I keep them inside here in a buffalo bag. Nice and tidy and tight. Then I can take that out to cook or boil water or make medicine or whatever I'm going to do. Now this pot has butterfly handles on it that are steel that are riveted on. It has a bale on it that used to have locking positions on it but that has since been worn out because the pot's so old. It has an aluminum lid with a nice lip tab on it that's riveted in. It's completely aluminum design. You can see how beat up and old the thing is. And this one happens to have a pour spout with a straining device built into it because it was made for coffee and things like that, which makes it a very good bush pot to use for making medicines and things of that nature in the bush. The only thing is that this thing gets in the way a little bit, and you got to be careful not to bump or smash this because it is aluminum. But again, you know, this thing's probably being made in the 50s. You're talking about this thing being over 50, 60 years old, and there's nothing wrong with it. So it's a good bush pot. The problem with this pot is you're not going to be able to find these. I found this one in a complete cook system that I bought off of eBay. You're not going to find something like this very well manufactured like this one is, brand new. So... On to the new product. This is called the Bush Pot. It's manufactured in the USA by a company called Open Country. It is an exclusive design to Four Dog Stove Company. They have agreed to wholesale this pot to us. It's called the Morse Bush Pot. It is Morse Kohansky approved. Obviously, you can't argue with that guy. Very similar to the pot that he's been carrying for years and years. It has exactly the same features for the most part as that old pot that I showed you. It is black anodized aluminum, so there's an improvement. It has nice heavy steel butterfly handles on it, riveted to the side, just like the older pot did. It has a bailing handle that locks in several positions, actually locks in five positions. The pour spout on this one is actually made into the container. So it does not have that strainability effect that the other one had, which may be a slight downfall to this pot. But at the same time, you really don't have anything protruding from the pot to get in the way for packability's sake, or that you have to worry about smashing if you drop it. The other thing I like about this pot is the lid is pretty well friction fit on here. You're not going to turn this thing upside down with your kit and it's not going to come off. It's not that good of a friction fit, but it's a pretty decent friction fit. It's as good as the other pot is for sure. What I like about this is it's a two-quart pot, just like this one. If you look at these pots, they're almost exactly the same dimension. This one is five and three-quarter inches tall, five and three-quarter inches around, making it 1.8 liters or two quarts. So it's a very good system to carry in your pack. Now, this is a redundant container. This would not be the only container I would carry unless... I were in the eastern woodlands going on a scout, and I knew that I was going to be around a lot of water where I didn't have to carry water too much. I'm not going to carry water in this. 
This is going to be for processing food and processing water to disinfect it and things like that. It's not going to be a water container that I'm going to transport my water in. I'm going to use a stainless steel bottle, nesting cup, something like that, a canteen, a stainless steel canteen, something like that to transport my water in. This is going to give me the ability to cook and make my water potable very quickly and easily without having to put that bottle into the fire so that I can boil, dump, boil, dump, boil, dump, if that's what I choose to do. So this would be a redundant container, not necessarily a main container. Although, if you're in an area like the Eastern Woodlands where there's lots and lots of water, it could be your main container, and then you could just use it to also store part of your kit, just like I do with this one. You could stuff your kit down inside there in a bag like this one from Deepwood Handcraft, fold those butterfly handles in, and put that inside your backpack and it becomes a container to hold part of your kit so the room that it's taking up also is taking up part of your kit by placing it on the inside and then when you're ready to cook with it all you have to do is pull that complete kit out and you're not unloading this thing or dumping it out on anything before you get ready to go so it works out very well for that you know as far as redundant containers go I don't think you can beat something like this this is a pot that I've been carrying for a long time it looks exactly the same. This pot I saw was introduced to by Jason Gustafson at the Pathfinder Gathering, and he turned me on to Open Country and Four Dog Stove Company. I called the guy up, very nice guy to deal with. I asked him to wholesale me these things so I could sell them at the MSRP of $34, and he did that. So we have 100 of these en route to the Pathfinder School right now. Should be on the website by Friday of this week.